I'll just speak loud. Um, first of all, it's been an honor and a privilege for me to be a part and work with this team this semester. It's the first time I've done this, and uh, it was a great privilege. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect. A lot of people told me about it, and I, uh, Jeff, I thank you for recruiting me and Holly and, uh, and, and Daniel for you guys for building this amazing program because it's just, it really is amazing. Um, in my working career, and I work, I'm an engineer, Tom, thank you. Uh, thank you. But I've been, I, I worked, I've been working since I graduated from the University of Oklahoma almost, almost 40 years. And I've had the privilege of working and traveling a lot in the developing world. And one of the things I'm very passionate about is the topic these folks are talking about tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank the team for the opportunity to work with them. Uh, you guys have amazing resilience. Your hard work and, and perseverance has paid off. And, uh, this is going to be great to see tonight. Sam, I'd like to thank you for your bulldog tenacity, uh, leadership, uh, your own focus on this thing to, pull this, to help this team pull it together. It's been a really privileged working with all of y'all. Uh, Laura Brunson, who developed the technology through the College of Engineering, is not here tonight. Uh, and she asked me to speak on a couple of topics, so even though I go over my two minutes, I'm going to use some of Laura's two minutes. Uh, I'm sure I will. Um, first of all, the population of this planet is approaching 7 billion people. And a billion of those, almost a billion of those people do not have access to safe drinking water. Um, there are lots of technical, uh, well, first of all, there's a lot of work going on around the world to solve these problems. Um, you may have heard of an initiative called Millennium Development. Millennium Development has a goal to cut this roughly billion people uh, sort of target market in half by 2015. That is a really ambitious goal. Groups like this, some of the thinking that's going on here is going to be a real part of that. Um, and, and I think Laura would tell you if she was here herself, there's lots of technical solutions being developed here at OU, through the Water Center, uh, through the College of Engineering, around the country, and around the world. A lot of technical solutions. But techn technical solutions are not the real issue. The real issue is how to turn those technical uh, solutions into reliable, affordable, and sustainable solutions that reach many, many people as fast as we possibly can. This goal, uh, the goals that I just talked about, the billion dollar tar billion people target, for the billion people, that is three times the population of the United States. That is a huge, huge target and a very ambitious goal. And we've got to deal with it fast. Uh, the objective of this group is to deal with a particular problem. The technical solution is aimed at a particular problem, ultra-high fluoride concentrations in places like Ethiopia. And that's, the, that's the direction of their, uh, of their, their project. Uh, but what these kids have done during the course of this semester They've done some pioneering on rethinking the whole prospect of what this means to translate technical solutions into viable working solutions that can be implemented on a broad scale. Uh, again, I emphasize reliable, affordable, and sustainable. That's what they're working on. And they're opening up new kinds of thinking. And I, pr I promise you, looking around the world, there's been lots of people, well-meaning, well-intentioned, uh, methods and, and approaches to dealing with these problems. Uh, for instance, I know some guys that are retired drilling engineers, and they go out and drill water wells for people in various places around the developing world. But they go, they drill, and they leave. And there's no sustainability. There's no maintenance. There's no, when the, when the well, wells break down, the pumps break down, it's gone. This is, we're working on solutions that really are sustainable. And I think that's what will get you excited. It's gotten me excited. I hope you are too by the time you uh, finish this evening in this presentation. So thanks for being here. Enjoy. Hello, we're Team Quenchdown. I'm Sam Clancy, a sophomore letters major from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm Anup Deedball. I'm a sophomore industrial engineering major from Youngstown, Ohio. I'm Doug Daniel, sophomore computer engineering major from New York. My 
My name is Oliver Lee. I'm a sophomore economics and industrial engineering major from Stillwater. Our team leader is Samantha Tall, an international study, security studies and economics senior from Warren Willow, Illinois. This semester, we've been working with our mentor, Laura Brunson, a PhD candidate here at the university, who's also been working with OU's Water Center. Our mentor is Bruce Stover, who is a former executive vice president and founding member of Endeavor International Corporation. Clenchek is fighting fluorosis in Ethiopia through a sustainable business plan which provides access to defluoridated water and creates awareness regarding the causes of fluorosis. Eight million people living within the Rift Valley of Ethiopia are exposed to elevated levels of fluoride in naturally occurring drinking water. The World Health Organization recommends the consumption of less than 1.5 milligrams of fluoride per liter of water. However, within the Rift Valley, the range of fluoride in drinking water ranges all the way up to 20 milligrams of fluoride per liter of drinking water. When one consumes elevated levels of fluoride for an extended period of time, one suffers from the effects of fluorosis. Fluorosis manifests itself in two ways. Dental fluorosis, as shown on the left, is characterized by the browning, mottling, and weakening of one's teeth. Skeletal fluorosis is characterized by the deformation of one skeleton and the impairment of joint mobility. Along with these adverse health effects, those who suffer from fluorosis also experience crippling social and economic consequences in the forms of discrimination in social settings and lower productivity from people not being able to work as long or as rigorously as people who do not have uh, the effects of fluorosis. This problem is further worsened by the fact that within the Rift Valley, there's a lack of access to defluorinated water, and there's lack of awareness regarding the causes of fluorosis. The lack of access is caused by poor water distribution infrastructure within the country. This problem is further complicated by the fact that the average Ethiopian lives off of only $100 per year. A lack of awareness is caused by many misconceptions surrounding the causes of fluorosis. Right now, people really don't know what causes fluorosis in Ethiopia. People think that it comes from not brushing their teeth enough, not drinking enough milk, or eating hot potatoes. The, the problem of lack of awareness regarding the causes of fluorosis is further complicated by the fact that only 40, that 42% of adults cannot read or write. So, within Ethiopia, there is a problem with elevated levels of fluoride. There's a lack of access to the fluoridated water, and there's a lack of awareness regarding the causes of fluorosis. Here now is Aaron to walk you through how Quench Tech plans on combating these issues. Thank you, Sam. As you all heard, there's clearly a crisis in the Rift Valley of Ethiopia. But fortunately, Quench Tech has a solution as it couples its scalable, sustainable business model with a visual education based marketing strategy will ultimately bring access to defluoridated water and awareness about the true causes of fluorosis. The technology that we will be using in our solution is bone charm. When animal bones, usually from cattle, are charred in the kiln, they produce the poorish, blackish, granular material that you see here. In this char, it's packaged in a filter, and water with a high fluoride content is passed through. The bone char is able to absorb the fluoride due to its specific surface area and specific surface chemistry. Bone char is able to absorb 2.2 milligrams of fluoride per gram of char. This is important because these filters can be adjusted in size based on the individual community's fluoride levels to guarantee that they filter water safe. Furthermore, these filters effectively remove 97 to 99 percent of the fluoride from the drinking water that is passed through, consistently producing drinking water below the WHO recommended fluoride standard. The three steps to bone char commercialization are production, distribution, and marketing. Which tech will be covering the distribution and marketing steps? And the Aroma Self-Help Organization, or OSHO, will handle the production aspect. OSHO is a nonprofit in the Aromia region of Ethiopia dedicated to improving the lives of those that live in the region. About two months ago, they completed construction of a bone trap facility in Mojo, Ethiopia. They've been working with and receiving advice from the leading expert in sustainable bone char implementation. However, their facility is currently understaffed and
and not being utilized to its full capacity, and so they are eager to specialize and just focus on production and let another organization, Quinchtech, handle the distribution and marketing. Now that you understand the first step of the commercialization strategy, Anoop will tell you about our target market and their current water practices so we can best build our distribution strategy around their current water <coughs> Thank you very much, Aaron. Part one of QuenchTech's two-part solution is providing access to defluoridated water to the people of the, to the people of the Rift Valley of Ethiopia. Now, in order to implement a good solution to this, it is important to craft it around the current water practices of that market. So let's get to know the market a little bit. As Sam mentioned, there are 8 million people currently living in the Rift Valley that are affected by elevated levels of fluoride in their drinking water. Of this 8 million, 75%, or about 6 million people, access water from outside their housing compound. Now, since QuenchTech wants to make a big solution or a big impact on this market to tackle this problem, we have identified this 75%, this 6 million number, as our target market. Now, in order to meet the current water practices of this target market, Quenchtech will be implementing community filters. The benefits to community filters are that, are that they will be centrally located in the same place that these people currently go in order to access their daily water needs. Also, at each of these community filters, there will be Quenchtech trained employees, and these people will be trained in order to make sure that the water is filtered correctly, maintaining quality assurance. Also, through the community filter, QuenchTech will be able to have a faster impact on a larger number of people. Currently, customers of water access fluoridated water from government centrally located access points. For one day per family, a person buys about 32 liters of water, and again, only for cooking or drinking purposes a day. And this comes out to about $12.25 a year. Now, in towns where QuenchTech will be working, QuenchTech will buy about 32 liters of fluoridated, unsafe water from the government, filter it, and then sell that amount of safe, clean, defluoridated water to the customer. We will sell it for about $24.50 a year. And this price point was uh, was achieved after uh, looking at willingness to pay information received from uh, within the Ethiopian government. 